Okay, so let's get everybody right around the table and get today's business morning started live here on Channel's Television, Nigeria's News Leader. I am Busin Amafai. We welcome our viewers here in Nigeria and around the world. Let's get started with a story that came about 8 o'clock this morning. Moody's uh, rating agency, one of the world's top three rating firms, has released a new report keeping its outlook on Nigerian banking system stable, saying the state of Nigeria's banking industry reflects the resilient capital buffers and stable deposit bases of all Nigeria banks. According to the new report uh, today, uh, Moody's says, quote, high risks in the banking sector likely to subside as the economy is expected to strengthen. According to Moody's, Nigerian banks' asset risk and profitability will remain key rating challenges, but the agency says it expects these challenges to gradually decline in the year 2020 as Nigeria economy picks up. Very interesting and positive news there for Nigeria. Moody's went on to add that banks, funding, and liquidity profiles will remain stable thanks to solid deposit bases of the banks. Other key highlights of the report, according to Moody's, is that non-performing loans of Nigerian banks is expected to decline to 7% or 8% over the outlook period from 11.7% at the end of last year but still at a high level, according to the report. Moving forward, uh, Moody says a system-wide tangible common equity of the banks will be stable at 16% of risk-weighted assets at the end of last year, sufficient, however, to bear any losses by the banks. Moody says banks' revenue will be constrained by subdued loan growth while cost pressures due to their investments and AMCON's levy 2 and higher staff costs with slow pre-provision profitability. We'll have more time during the rest of the week to uh, uh, drill down on the latest Moody's positive uh, outlook and report on Nigeria. It's about a 22-page uh, document you want to read that, but that's just giving you a bit of the, what you call the executive summary. So the uh, saga between Wando and the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, got a bit of a new twist yesterday when the audit firm sent in by the SEC but asked by the, by the SEC for by one or two, one or two pay for the audit, Deloitte Nigeria issued a very two-paragraph statement saying one of those PLC's press statement issued June the 17th, 2019, quote, contains material factual inaccuracies relating to our conduct of the forensic audit as commissioned by the Securities and Exchange Commission, end of quote. Deloitte Nigeria says, quote, we maintain the highest standards of professionalism and client confidentiality. We do not intend to respond in detail to all aspects of the Windows Press release as it relates to us, but the firm says it reserves the right to do so at a later stage should it become necessary. And what else is in the news from the marketplace this morning? Dark Communications PLC, uh, the owners of Raypar and AIT, the only listed broadcast on the Nigerian stock market, says the meeting was held on June 9th between the company, some leaders of the broadcasting industry, and the Director General of the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission in efforts to find a makeable resolution, quote-unquote, of issues relating to uh, the broadcasting organization. According to the... A statement released to the Nigerian Stock Exchange, uh, Dark Communications says a truce was reached by both parties, that is, Dark Communications PLC and the industry regulator NBC. Dark Communications uh, went to say in the statement that on June 13th, both parties informed uh, the court of intention to settle the dispute out of court, after which uh, the court has now set June the 26th as the date to enable all parties to conclude the terms of that settlement uh, out of court and file the same papers for settlement of the dispute. That's bringing the market, investors and everyone, up to speed. And let's just hide this to you in the news. Nigeria's kidnapping and insecurity is getting a notch higher. This is uh, coming through news just in that the Oyo State Police Command has confirmed the abduction of the son of the Nigeria's former Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewale. Report says Dayo. Adewale, that's the son of the former health minister, was kidnapped at a Iroko community on the way to your town. The police commissioner, uh, Shino, 
uh, Olukolu confirmed to Channel's television that Mr. Adewale was abducted on his farm. Uh, Mr. Olukolu says three arrests have been made. That's according to the police. Three arrests have been made among these, uh, some of the domestic staff of the abducted uh, individual and investigations are ongoing to find Dayo Adewale as soon as possible. You stick with us for news and further details on this uh, at 11 o'clock. We'll get you, bring you up to speed. And of course, you can see uh, that on our news bar and all of that. We're keeping an eye on this. Of course, Nigeria's banditry and the raging kidnapping across the country was part of President Buhari's uh, main speech, a very lengthy 74-paragraph speech, in which he says this has become worrisome to the government, but the authorities are determined to tackle that. That is uh, as far as that is. So that we put that also in, in context today as we get this conversation going. Let's check in for about one minute uh, with the marketplace, how we finished off yesterday. Just a quick wrap there for you. We, we sank a little bit below the 29,000. Yesterday, again, we started Monday, uh, Tuesday around the 29, uh, Monday around the uh, 29,000 level. Now we sunk a bit further yesterday, 0.39%. Uh, and you can see the numbers uh, playing out on your TV screen. Uh, if you move out the way, you see the activity in terms of volume. Yes, investors continue to buy heavily big transactions in Wemma Bank. So we uh, kept nearly 3 billion shares uh, yesterday, uh, and that gave you a very hefty Naira value, 11.22 billion Naira in more than 3,000 transactions. The banking sector remained very strong. If you look at the five key sectors we track on a daily basis for you, 0.32% because of the big deals within that. But their cousins, the insurance, was much, uh, much better by 1.72%. Um, industrial goods was just a tad of 0.04%. Consumer goods fell 1.22%, and oil and gas about half a percent in the green. So what's the story around the oil and gas sector? Uh, Wando, despite uh, the whole issue around the company, uh, uh, got 6.76% investors' interest yesterday. The price moved back up to 3.95 cobalt, 2.725 million ordinary shares. The stock was uh, the most active uh, on the uh, at the uh, oil and gas space. Japol added 4.17%, but a very small, considering the market cap of that uh, maritime uh, company. Uh, Forty Oil stepped back a little bit uh, in the negative 33, 2.48%. Um, Unlisted security is still uh, on the downside, 1.73% uh, haircut for the uh, unlisted securities market. And for the first time in recent weeks, the market cap of the small unlisted company a market went down below the 540 billion. And I said it's on Monday. That the way things are going. Any as the market cap might dip below the 240. Now we saw 530.77 because of that massive downside, one and about three quarter of a percent on the US side. And again, the treasuries market remain very active. Uh, 305 deals, 127.15 billion, shorted treasury still trading water in terms of discount highs. You can see that there, 9.5% for uh, that trade mature in August 22nd. And you can see other yields also are tapering there. We'll, we'll talk about that a bit later on the program. But let's talk about some of the big story about President Buhari's 74 page, or oh, 74 paragraphs, I pardon. 74 pages would take many hours. 74 paragraphs, really. Uh, and some of the paragraphs were actually really short. But the President delivered one of his longest speech on Democracy Today, June uh, the 12th, which is now officially Democracy Day for Nigeria. Let's uh, uh, throw the, uh, the global foreign economic policy side of this conversation to Andrew Nevin, who is a partner and chief uh, executive and the chief uh, economist at uh, PwC uh, Nigeria. Andrew Nevin is joining us live from our studios at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Andrew will be weighing in on this conversation uh, for within the hour, so we want you, everyone to be on standby. Uh, but very quickly, lest I forget, yesterday, uh, the new Federal Competition and Consumer Protection, that's the FCCPC under Babatunde Irukera, held the first of its two uh, planned town hall meetings in the electricity sector in Ikeja yesterday. Let's take a listen to the uh, Director General of the FCCPC, uh, what he has to say about the state of the energy industry and if consumers angst against the power distribution companies. The Ministry of Power tells us every time 
The regulator, NERC, tells us every time it is not the customer's responsibility to provide the data. So why, why are we still providing equipment? Why are we having to put money together to buy transformers? I have some answers. Calm down. Calm down. Am I getting it right or wrong? Okay, so let's calm down. Let's calm down. I have heard and I suspect that if we go to Ikeja Electrics store or warehouse, we will find transformers there. Am I right or am I wrong, sir? I have heard Sometimes that they at the top in the office do not even know that you are looking for that your transformer is down. Sometimes they don't know. But you know my answer to that. Do you know what my answer to that is? Some of the operatives who work for the company, they are the ones who come to the neighborhood and say the transformer is down. There is no transformer. If you can put money together, we'll get you transformer. It is Ikeja Electric that must do whatever the work requires to ensure that their operatives, their marketers, their technicians are not going out to lie to people, to extort people, or to exploit us. And we are willing to help them that duty. They can have a department called Inspector General's Department that does investigation. They can have a department where they say it is for whistleblowing. You in the community, give us information about what is going on so that they can begin to hold their own operatives accountable. There is something called responsiveness and sensitivity. If their operatives treat us with dignity. We are more willing to understand what their own problems are. Babatunde Irekara, the Director General at the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Council. One of the uh, two town hall meetings planned for Lagos this week. That was yesterday and uh, the other one will be on downtown uh, tomorrow, Thursday the 28th.